miles an hour. Up over the top. At over four, only 400 feet above the ground, he'll roll the aircraft upright with a half a roll into the upright position, doing one half of the Cuban 8 maneuver. Quickly pulling over the top. He'll do the same thing in the opposite direction with the Cuban 8. After World War I, if a pilot in that first air war survived when the average life of a fighter pilot was only about three weeks, Watch John, now he's at 400 feet, he's gonna come all the way through this loop. Pull him through, pull him through, pull him through, watch him level off. Oh, at the bottom, leveling off just 40 feet above the ground. The average life of a fighter pilot in World War I, about three weeks. And they wanted to stay in aviation, so they buy a used Sir Curtis, Jenny Trainer. They fly over the town, do some aerial stunts, land in the water, and get for five or ten dollars a piece. This is the barnstorming epitome of the 21st century. Pulling hard on the stick, John Moore does the inside hump to bump. A quarter roll to the right. Yes. Right down towards show center. The nose will come up. He goes into a four. Point. Hesitation roll. Stopping every 90 degrees of roll. Now, the airplane without an up without an inverted fuel and oil system, he gets upside down too long and the airplane will literally, the engine will quit. So listen carefully, we may see some of that. As he turns around with a hammerhead stall turn, we go from a four point hesitation roll. Let's see if he can do it every 45 degrees with an eight point hesitation roll. John Moore from Minnesota. Winner of the Art Show Memorial Showmanship Award. He's upside down, listen. Watch him for the next part of the program. Fighting a stiff on crowd wind. At less than 100 miles an hour. Up he goes, not with a square loop, but with an eight sided loop. A 45 degree pull. There's side four, side five, 40, side six, side seven. Side eight, leveling off just 35 or 40 feet off the ground and quickly rolls the airplane upside down as he turns to the left. Yeah, awesome. Now John's gonna climb the airplane just a little bit more, continuing to roll it as he turns. This is an extremely challenging maneuver. He's gonna set up for a maneuver that he's gonna dedicate to his wife, Lynn. Lynn travels with him everywhere. She is a lovely lady. And John is going to do something that very few airplanes were meant to do, especially not an airplane made of wood and tubular steel and fabric over it. This is a tumbling maneuver that John's going to call the Lynchabach, based on the Lumshabach, the Czech word that means walking with an inebriated gait. Watch for him to tumble it. The snap roll, now watch this. Here's the tumble, whoa, there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lynchabot, give it up for John Moore. 
Up he goes, quarter roll. He'll run out of airspeed. Gravity wins big time. Power comes off the tail slide. Watch him swap in. He'll put it into a spin. There's two turns, and he'll recover. Watch him level off. Whoa! Just 10 feet above the ground. Rolls it upside. <laughs> Starts with roll. Now, this guy understands the ground and the relationship of this airplane to the ground better than anybody else. But let's watch as he climbs and climbs and climbs. He'll run out of airspeed. Now the airplane's going to stall. And he'll recover. This is called the falling leap. Let's see if he's going to do it. Yep. He'll stall. He'll recover. The wing stalls. He flies again. It quits flying and starts falling. He keeps coming down in a falling leaf, knowing exactly where the airplane is as he comes down closer and closer to the ground, less than 200 feet above the ground. There's 175 and quickly recovers. Oh, yeah. And I saw it from here. His wheels weren't more than three feet off the ground. How about that? You like this guy? Now you know why he's the award winner. Watch him fly the fuselage very, very slowly across. Oh, no, wait a minute. Listen carefully. He's going to roll it upside down. Listen to the engine. He's waving at you. Start the engine, John. I said, start the engine. And there he goes. How about that? He was waving at you while he was upside down, waiting for that engine to quit. Now he flies the fuselage along the show line. Watch how low he gets. Almost knife edge. That left wing tip within five feet of the ground. The tail within three feet of the ground. And let's see if he'll try it going the other direction. Coming back again from the right, one more time. Is that amazing or what? Takes it right down toward the grass. Oh yeah! I love this guy, give him a big hand. Now, John Moore is going to set up to land. I think he's talking to the air boss. I want you to watch the landing. He's sitting in the back seat of the two seats of this Stearman biplane. John can't see very well over the nose. So he's going to come back in and check out his position on the runway before he lands. And to do that, he's going to roll it over on its back. This is called the inverted approach to landing, something most of us don't do as pilots. He'll roll it upside down. Now he'll get in there close and he'll say, okay, I ain't done yet. Watch him snap roll it. That's a high speed stall. And then slipping it down with a lot of left stick and right rudder and just over the runway, level it off. Now watch him, see if he goes sideways, sets it down. Now he sees that he can put one wheel down on the runway. And he's got both wheels down. Now watch him, he's almost to a dead stop. He's going to turn off, whoop, he's going to keep, he's dead stop, the tailwheel's still off the ground. Now he's got it down, going to come off the runway and back taxi and head on back to parking.